Hey everybody, this is TJR. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. If not, welcome back. And today, I want to kind of go back through time and discuss this. This is the original Led Zeppelin box set from 1990. This was the first Led Zeppelin box set. Uh, this set was originally um, released on CD as a four CD set, on cassette, believe it or not, it was a four cassette set, and there was a six LP set, which I have to think right now is probably very rare and probably very expensive on the aftermarket, especially now with the, you know, the vinyl uh, renaissance the way it is at this point in time. And now a little bit of history here. Um, prior to the release of this in 1990, Led Zeppelin's catalog, the, the individual albums had been released on CD as separate albums. But from what I have read, the audio sourcing was considered somewhat dubious as to you know where they got the audio from. Um, there were complaints that the audio quality was poor on those original CDs. Um, the, the primary thing that I've read is that this here, this set was the first time that Zeppelin's catalog was mastered for CD. So um, that was the thing. Previously, it had not been mastered for CD. And apparently this happened a lot during the early days of, of the CD, um, that a lot of albums were just simply quickly transferred over. The audio was just transferred over to CD. And the source, who knows? Um, they obviously maybe didn't go back to the original master tapes. Maybe they got them off like a second or third generation. But either way, they didn't really do anything to master it for CD to optimize uh, what CDs could offer. Uh, at any rate, though, th this setup was, like I said, uh, was mastered for CD and the mastering was supervised by Jimmy Page. Now, this first set, uh, of course, I've, this is the four CD set. And I should tell you something. I used to own this, then I sold it. This copy I'm holding my hand in my hands, I have just recently acquired. I have repurchased this after all these decades. I bought this on eBay. Um, spent about like uh, 15 bucks and then shipping on top uh, for it. Actually, no, it was about 10 bucks. That's right, it was about 10 bucks. The shipping is about 15. So this is still easy to obtain if you're willing to just look and shop for a deal. You can obtain this here. It does show some wear. You can see it here on the box here. It definitely shows some wear, but it's not in terrible condition. Um, inside, of course, uh, everything looks, in my opinion, really good on this repurchase here. This is the original booklet here. The original booklet um, featured three essays, and uh, they were Led Zeppelin Light and Shade by Cameron Crowe, The Roots of Heaven by Kurt Loder, and Led Zeppelin the Music by Robert Palmer. Um, so one of the reasons I rebought this is I wanted to just revisit it again. And I'll tell you why I got rid of it in just a moment here. But I kind of wanted to revisit it. I kind of wanted to just be able to reread the booklet. It also came with uh, this little uh, photographic fold-out here, insert. And uh, it op actually opens up four ways. I don't know if we can get this all here on the camera, but it's a bit uh, a bit length, lengthy here. There we go. Um, this came with that too. And then, of course, we have the, uh, the four CDs here. Um, CD1. Actually, I'll just show you the whole inside of the box. Hopefully these won't fall out. There we go. Four CDs. Now, there are some other reasons why I rebought this, and I'll, like I said, I'll get to that in just a moment here. This set also included four rarities. Uh, a new track, Traveling Riverside Blues. Hey, Hey, What Can I Do? Which was a 45 single that was never released on an album and was not previously released on CD. So you had to have that 45 if that was the only way you could own a copy of it. Uh, White Summer, Black Mountainside, a live unreleased track. And Moby Dick Bonzo's Montro, which was a mashup of two previously retract tracks, Moby Dick and uh, from Blood Zeppelin II and Bonzo's Montro from Coda, um, mashed together. Honestly, um, 
if I had to choose between the three, I think that this mashup is better sounding than either of the originals. Now, I should say that while this set did not feature the entire Led Zeppelin catalog, it did feature a huge portion of it. So a few years later, a companion set was released, uh, a volume two, which had two CDs. And I used to own that one too. And again, I'll talk about why I got rid of them in just a moment here. Uh, but it, it basically completed your collection. If you had this, you got that two CD set, you now had everything. And that one also included a special uh, unreleased track entitled Baby Come On Home. Now, it was not too long after that that then there was a box set released entitled The Complete Studio Recordings. Now, here we had a box set that featured all the studio albums uh, in jewel cases. The only thing missing, of course, was The Song Remains the Same was not included. I should also add that there, was, there were no tracks from The Song Remains the Same included on this either. And when that came out, I thought to myself, nah, I've already got this one. I've got the two CD set. I've got everything. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pass on that. So I, I did. Then in 2008, we saw the release of this. This is Led Zeppelin Definitive Edition, uh, or I should say Led Zeppelin Definitive Edition Collection Mini LP Replica CD Box Set. That's a long title. Uh, again, this came out in 2008. This set here featured mini LP replicas of each album. And this was a Japanese set, as you can see by the Obi strips. But here, unlike the, the previous box set, each album was, was presented in its original miniature, uh, with miniature LP packaging. So here on Led Zeppelin 3, you actually had the return of the pinwheel. Um, in some of the commentary on this set here. There's a quote from Robert Plant, uh, I believe, where he talked about how, how much work went into the creation of the cover of Led Zeppelin IV for that gatefold image that you have on both the, you know, on the outside and on the inside of, of the LP, and how when it came out on CD, it's just a little piece of paper now. You don't even get the full gatefold image because that's just the way they made did CDs back then, by and large. They didn't preserve or make any effort to preserve the original uh, art and packaging in any way, shape, or form. And so the nice thing about this set was that it did uh, replicate the way they, they were originally released on LP. Um, in addition, it also did include The Song Remains the Same. And to my surprise, um, if you look at the back here, the track listing is the way the album was originally released, but when you actually take out the CDs and look at the track listing there, this has been expanded on. It's a two CD set, and there are a lot more tracks that were never featured on the original. So that was a real surprise because it really, I don't recall it being advertised that way. Um, in addition, it had some other bonuses. As an example, you got all four versions of the cover through In Through the Outdoor. And I decided that, yeah, if I was gonna get another set, it would definitely be this one here. I did, and back then, of course, I compared it. I listened to these CDs, I compared them to the audio on this, and my feeling was that there was no difference. They sounded exactly the same. So I said to myself, okay, you enjoyed this for a while, along with the other two CD set, You'd much rather hear them with their original album sequencing, the way they were meant to be heard. And so I got rid of this. I got rid of the two CD set. So why did I buy it back? Well, I'll talk about that in just a moment. But before I do, um, I wanted to just also give a mention to the uh, catalog remastering that happened somewhere around 2014 or so. Again, don't quote me on this. I'm just, I'm just talking off of memory here. I'm not researching this ahead of time. But there was a catalog remastering some years back, around 2014, 2015, roughly. I remember I talked about it on this channel prior to it being released. And I did talk about some of the releases. I remember at the time I, I bought Led Zeppelin 1 and I later bought Led Zeppelin 3 when that was released. And I'll be honest, I listened to them and then I compared them to these. 
you know, uh, the version I already had. And these were supposed to be brand new remasterings, again, supervised by Jimmy Page. Also, they featured uh, bonus discs with bonus tracks, uh, live tracks in some cases, demos, um, alternate mixes, that sort of thing. And I'll be honest, I listened to the, the albums. I didn't think the remasterings offered much of an advantage over these. And this, I felt, was the same as this. So I didn't feel there was really a, that big of a difference to warrant buying the catalog again. I sampled two of them and later, you know, I just let them go. I didn't even think the bonus tracks were that great. When I listened to Led Zeppelin 3, I think the bonus tracks were all that great. There were a lot of, to me, kind of dubious bonus tracks, like you'd get ones that said, you know, instrumental mix. Okay, so they brought down the fader on the vocals. Big deal. Um, I've seen other artists do that with their bonus tracks when they re-release their albums for an anniversary of some sort, and I've never been too pleased with that. Although there have been exceptions, I'll admit um, She's Leaving Home from the Sgt. Pepper box set um, with just the string orchestra, beautiful, amazing. There are exceptions to that rule, but by and large, I've never been too impressed with that. But I thought that all the re-releases were pretty anemic when it came to the bonus tracks, and... Even though I didn't purchase them, I did listen to them on streaming, and I just, like I said, just was kept not being all that impressed, with one exception, which is why I bought it, and that was the, the re-release of Coda during the time that they did that set. Coda here was a three-CD set, and it, along with, of course, the original album, it just featured a huge, huge amount of great bonus material. I mean, it was impressive. And so this was the only one that I bought that I actually kept and didn't get rid of. And I've always recommended this one. I kind of wonder, you know, there wasn't much difference between this and this. I kind of think they were the same. There wasn't that much time between them, in my opinion. There wasn't much difference between this and then what came out around 2014, 2015. And... Maybe because they were well-recorded enough the first time that there was only so much you could really do with them in that respect. I've heard that what Jimmy Page tries to accomplish with the later, the most recent set of remasterings, was that he tried to make it consistent between all formats. So whether you listen to it on CD or LP or MP3 streaming, uh, you know, that type of thing. Uh, people were still buying music on iTunes at that point, I think. Uh, so even if you were just purchasing the MP3s, um, that there would be a consistency in how they sounded with against each other. And honestly, when those uh, new remasters came out, I did later down the line, some years afterwards, pick up the LP release of Houses of the Holy. And I wasn't that impressed with it, with that LP. And I remember I did a video about that one too, I believe. And I ended up just getting rid of it. Now, one thing that I have to admit I have... Uh, enjoyed is finding vintage copies of the original albums. Uh, this is one that Superfan got for me. Uh, gotta love Superfan because, you know, she's not into Led Zeppelin. And there are people out there, when they buy someone a gift, they buy them what they like, not what they think the person they're buying the gift for would like. Superfan is not one of those. She doesn't buy what she would like. She buys what she knows you like. And so even though she's not into Led Zeppelin, you know, she went out of her way to, to find a good used copy for me at a store, and so that was sweet of her. But um, anyway, so I have enjoyed those because I am hearing an audio difference when I compare them to the CD set that I have. So this brings me back full circle now to rebuying this just uh, about a week or so ago, uh, person on eBay and, you know, and then it getting shipped over to me. Um, partly, like I said before, I missed it. I wanted to kind of see it again. I wanted to reread the book again. But I also wanted to listen to it because my audio gear has improved over the years. My ears, I think, have really improved. My ability to hear nuances when I listen to recordings has improved. Of course, some of that has to do with the improved gear, too. But I wanted to compare it again, CD to CD, comparing this, which has been what I've had all, this, all these years, to this and make another comparison and just see if my opinion is still the same. Um, 
I may find that there is, again, no difference. In which case, I'm only out 15 bucks and I could probably just resell this on eBay pretty quickly. It's been 24 hours and I have made a comparison now between the original 90s box set and the definitive mini LP replica set. When I did this the last time, I felt that there was really no real difference that I could discern. This time I heard quite a bit of difference. So for this comparison, I pulled out disc one of the original set and I pulled out Led Zeppelin two. And I compared Whole Lot of Love. This was easy to do because Whole Lot of Love was the first track on this disc and the first track on Led Zeppelin two. Then I pulled out Led Zeppelin one and I compared Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You, which is also on this disc. I wanted to hear the, you know, the heavy power of Whole Lot of Love, uh, check out the, the soundscape, the, the bizarre soundscape design during the midsection. And then I wanted to hear something more acoustic based, but still with a lot of power. So I chose uh, Whole Lot of Love and Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You for that reason. Then after that, I pulled out the second disc from the original set, pulled out Led Zeppelin IV, and I listened to Stairway to Heaven. And first thing I noticed was that there was definitely an added brightness to uh, the mini LP definitive set. This doesn't surprise me. I've heard from others online that Japanese CD pressings tend to be brighter. And depending on your tastes, that can sometimes be a good thing, sometimes be a bad thing. By and large, I think we're just naturally attracted to brightness more, but I've noticed that sometimes brightness is not always better. Sometimes added brightness can add a shrillness. But I didn't feel that with these at all. I feel that the added brightness helped with, uh, with, this particular, with these particular uh, pressings here from Japan. And I just felt overall that I liked the way that this set sounded better. Now, in no way do I want to say that this does not sound good. These sound absolutely fantastic. There are some who might appreciate the deeper, uh, bassier tone of these, of this set here. And Sometimes I find myself lean more towards that way, depending on what I'm listening to. But I feel for these recordings, the added brightness really helped enhance these. Um, I just think overall, the sound just, just felt better overall. That's all I can really say. So this time around, I feel stronger about this set. I kept it over the original set, because I thought originally that there wasn't that much difference and I thought this was cooler. I liked it, hearing the, the songs better in their original sequencing, album sequencing, versus the sequencing that they did for this set. Um, the only thing that I had to be aware of was that the unreleased bonus tracks weren't available on this set. So before I got rid of this originally, I made copies. However, though, since that time, I should add that all of the bonus tracks that um, were originally, you know, at the time available nowhere else on the original 90 set, uh, all of them have been made available on the Coda reissue from around 2014, 2015, with the exception of White Summer, Black Mountainside, which is now available off the complete BBC sessions. Also, I should add that the single bonus track off the two CD follow-up to the 90s box set is also contained here on the Coda reissue along with a whole treasure trove of great material. So this time we definitely have a clear winner. As for uh, this original set, I'll hold on to it for probably a little while longer. I at least want to read the booklet. But you know, I still have that vintage copy of Led Zeppelin 4 that Superfan got for me. Now that I've decided that I like this CD set better, I think it's time to do a comparison of Led Zeppelin 4 off of this set with my vintage copy and see what I think. But that'll be a future video. Anyways, let me know your thoughts. 
Let me know if you've ever com made comparisons like this with any of the reissued sets. Be curious to know what your findings were. Again, these are just my findings, my opinions, and your results may vary. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon so you never miss a video. I want to thank my patron supporters. Patron supporters do receive exclusive weekly videos not available on this channel. Most of all, I just want to thank you for stopping by and giving me the chance to just talk music with you. I really want to hear what you have to say about all this. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.